In this video, we will be demonstrating how to apply the sugar tong splint. As you just saw, we used the roll and compared it to the palm to determine that the padding will be wide enough for the splint. We want the padding to be wider than the fiberglass splint. We use the padding here to estimate how long the fiberglass splint should be. The sugar tongue splint should start from the proximal palm or crease with the forearm in a neutral position. The splint will wrap around the elbow and up the forearm's dorsal surface up to the MCP joints, where the wrist should be in a slightly extended position. After we have gotten our measurement for the padding, we actually extend it about a half inch on each side to give it some length to overlap the fiberglass splint. We usually do six to eight layers of padding. As you see here, when we lay down the padding, there's actually an overlap of about two inches between each layer. After we completed eight layers of padding for the fiberglass splint, we do two extra layers right here separately that will actually lay on top of the fiberglass. So the fiberglass splint will be essentially sandwiched between these two layers of padding with the heavily padded side against the skin. So we had two rolls of three inch fiberglass and we're laying down approximately six to eight layers. With a patient with a smaller arm, six layers of fiberglass may be sufficient. However, with someone with a larger arm, you may need to use closer to eight layers of fiberglass. Now we laminate the fiberglass. Now we add the thinner two-layered padding on top. Now as we apply the sugar tong splint, remember we want to start at the proximal palm or crease. Remember to keep the elbow in 90 degrees of flexion as we wrap around it. We 
can have the patient help hold the splint at the distal end as you wrap the elbow. You can start wrapping proximal to the elbow joint and cup the sugar tongue splint and wrap distal to the elbow joint. Watch out for radio or owner deviation. You fold the bandage in half as you wrap around the thumb. Here we do the interosseous mold. Remember to keep the wrist slightly extended, and you can also have the wrist in slight pronation. You have the patient rest the arm in this position. Make sure the splint is not too tight right there, and it's not too wide either. So the 3 inch fiberglass splint was perfect for this arm. You can take the splint off a little early if the patient complains of any pressure points. If necessary, you can add some more padding. I'd like to give a special thanks to Frankie Salazar and West Coast Sports Medicine.